What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be putting together an awesome little gaming PC that's not much bigger than an Xbox One X. Now before I get started, I just want to get this out of the way. Of course, the Ryzen 3000 CPUs are coming, and then the next year there'll be the 4000 and then the 5000, so there's always going to be something new right around the corner. As of making this video, AMD hasn't officially announced the 3000 series, but we're pretty sure they're on the way, and if you're watching this in the future, then they're probably already released. And you might be wondering why I used an R5 2600, because the price. So $150 for a 6-core, 12-thread CPU and performance is going to be great with the GPU I chose for this build. I just wanted to get that out of the way because in the tech field, there's always something new and better right around the corner, and you really can't ever keep up. I'm actually putting this PC together for a friend, so I'm going to go over all the parts that I'm using, then we'll do a little bit of a build, and then we'll get into some benchmarking, power consumption, and heat. So for the CPU, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 2600. This is not the X variant, this is the regular old 2600. Base clock of 3.4, boost of 3.9. Six cores, 12 threads, great CPU. And these are on sale all over online for around $150 to $160, so it's a really good deal. Since I'm going to be building in this super tiny case, I had to go with a mini ITX board, so I chose the ASRock Fatality B450. This has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. It's an awesome little board and it overclocks really well with this 2600. Now I'm not sure if we're going to be able to overclock in this tiny case, but with the right heat sink it should be possible. But for this build, we're going to leave it at the stock clocks. We got to add some RAM here, so I'm going with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM. This is T-Force from Team Group. I've used this in a previous build and I absolutely love this RAM. I've been able to get it up to 3400 megahertz running it daily. No issues at all. And you can score two 8GB sticks at 3000 megahertz for around $84 any time of the week. Since I wanted to keep this build all AMD, I opted for the ASRock Phantom Gaming Radeon RX 590. This has 8GB of GDDR5, and with the pre-programmed ASRock Overclock Mode, it'll do up to 1591 MHz. You can go a little higher than this. Now, I would recommend a 580 or a 590 for a build like this. You can pick up a used RX 580 for around $120 to $150 on eBay right now, and with some overclocking, you can match the performance of the RX 590. I've just had really good luck with ASRock, so I'm going to stick with them. And for the case, we're going to go as small as possible without breaking the bank. Now, there are smaller cases out there that'll fit all of these components just fine, like the Dan A case. But personally, I've never spent over $80 on a case, and I don't plan on doing it in the future. This is the Fractal Design Node 202. They come in at around $60, but you're going to have to get an SFX power supply, which could cost you more if you go with a higher wattage. Now, you could get around the same if you do a 450 watt. And personally, that's what I would have chose, but the person I'm building this for kind of wanted to go all out with the power supply so he could upgrade later on down the road, so he chose a Seasonic 650 watt, which comes in at around $108. It's a great power supply. In my opinion, the power supply is worth the cash, but for a build like this, you could have got away with a 450 watt for around $50 to $60. But moving back to the case, this is the Node 202. It's a small form factor case, and right beside it, I have a Fantex P300. I recently did a build in this. As you can see, the Node 202 is super small compared to it. It is bigger than the Xbox One or the PS4, but for $60, I think this is an awesome little buy. Like I mentioned, you can pick up smaller cases than this, like the Dan A4 case, or even the new Dr. Zalber or Zaber Century 2.0, but those range from $150 to $250 just for the case, and I can't bring myself to spend that when I can pick this up for $60. And finally, storage. Now this motherboard here does support an M.2 slot on the back so you can throw in an NVMe, but we opted to pick up one 240 gigabyte, 2.5 inch silicon power SSD, and a single 2.5 inch, one terabyte drive for holding games and things like that. We're gonna be putting the operating system and everything on the SSD. All of our Steam games will be on the mechanical drive. This setup's gonna make a great little small form factor, 1080p, 60 FPS, ultra gaming machine. It'll also do some games at 1440p, 60fps, with the settings drop down. But we're shooting for 1080p, 60fps gaming. 
I'm going to be using the stock cooler that came with the 2600. This could always be upgraded down the road to like a big Shuriken 2 or something like that. But for stock clocks, this should be fine in this tiny case. I did remove the shroud, but it's not totally necessary to fit everything in here. I just wanted to make sure I had enough clearance. Assembly is pretty tight in this case. I actually have the power supply in the wrong orientation. I do have to turn this over, but I wanted to make sure everything fit in here first. Cable management is going to be pretty tight, but I think we can get this looking good by the end here. So this case does support full-size GPUs and they kind of sit flat in here. So the Node 202 comes with these PCIe riser cards. You're going to attach the first riser card to the bracket we just pulled out. We're going to place it into the PCIe slot on the motherboard itself, bolt everything down, and then we have one more extension card we need to place in. And from here, the GPU will kind of sit flat. Before I put this in here, I do have a lot of cable management to do. I got to remove the back brackets and everything like that, but I kind of wanted to get this out of the way because it doesn't look like this GPU would fit in a case so small. There's also enough room in here to put two 120 millimeter fans underneath the GPU. For this build, I'm just going to be placing one, and if it really comes down to it, I can always add a second one. So now, all I really need to do is mount the GPU and tidy these cables up a little more. When it's all said and done, you'll get something that looks sort of like this. I think it came out great. Now, cable management was a lot better than I thought it would be just looking at the case, and I think it came out really, really nice. There's also magnetic filters for the PSU intake and the GPU intake. The Node 202 also comes with some rubber feet in case you want to use this PC horizontally for inside of an entertainment center or something like that. But personally, I like the way it looks sitting vertically with the stand. So now that I'm finished building the rig, it's time to test out the performance. I'm going to be going over some PC gaming here. We're going to do 1080p, 1440, and 4K. I also want to check out the thermals and power consumption. I love benchmark charts just as much as the next guy, but I also like showing off gameplay. I want you to see how this thing performs, so I got a few games here, and then we'll get into some charts. First up, we have Forza Horizon 4, one of my favorite racing games. This is 1080p, Ultra Settings. Unfortunately, I've never been able to get MSI Afterburner to display over top of these games, but I do have the FPS listed in the top right hand corner and we're well over 90 FPS here. Next up we have CSGO 1080p all maxed out. By the end of this round I was getting an average of 193 FPS with a minimum of 128. Battlefield 5, Ultra Settings, 1080p, we're getting an average of 75 to 76 FPS with a minimum of 61. This is totally playable here. Project Cars 2, 1080p, Ultra Settings, we're getting an average of 124 to 125 FPS with a low of 99. After all this time, Grand Theft Auto V is still one of my favorite games. I play it weekly. I've owned it on every console, and the day it was released on PC, I picked it up. We're getting an average of 102 FPS, a minimum of 80. I have grass set to high and MSAA set to 2. Everything else is on very high. Performance is outstanding with this one. I also tested a bunch of other games at 1080p, 1440, and 4K. Keep in mind that with each one of these games I had everything maxed out in the settings, you could get better performance by dropping some of them lower. Apex Legends is a big one right now at 1080p, we got an average of 67, 1440p, an average of 50, and 4K, an average of 29 FPS. Got a few more of these to go through, so I'm just going to let it play out.
Temperatures on the CPU and GPU were much better than I thought it would be in this case, but remember I am using this in the vertical position, so putting it horizontal could increase these temps. My ambient room temperature was 73 degrees Fahrenheit. At idle, we got 38 degrees Celsius on the CPU, and the max I ever saw this go was 74 degrees Celsius. A little higher than I wanted it to go, but I think this cooler's doing a decent job, and upgrading later on down the road will only net you better performance. As for the GPU, I'm using the stock fan profile, idle 28 degrees Celsius, and a maximum I saw was 71 degrees Celsius. I could add another 120 millimeter fan to the case and drop these temps a little bit, but I think it's doing pretty decent. And finally, power consumption from the wall. I'm using a kilowatt meter at idle, 46 watts, playing Grand Theft Auto 5 at ultra settings, 236 watts. And as for extreme testing, I use Prime 95, I run that, and then I start up Fire Strike Extreme. So this is a real extreme test here. This is maxing out the GPU, CPU as much as we can. 343 watts from the wall. I was expecting a little less from the extreme test, but this is what I got from the kilowatt meter. So overall, I'm loving the form factor here. 1080p performance is great on this thing, and 1440p is possible with some settings dropped down a little bit. I have no way to measure the noise output on this thing, but I can tell you right now, if you're looking for a silent PC, don't go super small form factor because these are going to be noisier than full-size rigs. But I can say, when this thing is at full power, it is louder than my PS4 Pro when that thing's chugging away. The price on building something like this is going to vary, but we have taken advantage of a lot of the new egg and Amazon deals that have been coming out in the last few weeks. If you keep your eye there, you can find some really good deals here. The price on this build, without including a Windows license key, is $814. You can find cheap license keys, or you could pay full boat. It's really up to you. But in the end, I think this rig came out pretty good. Now, you could cut cost on this if you didn't go with mini ITX and a small form factor like this. Pick up a micro ATX case that comes with a power supply and a micro ATX motherboard, and you can cut cost by about $80 off the top. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave links in the description to everything used in this video in case you want to build something like this. I'll also leave some alternative links so you can get it a little cheaper, but you'll be building a much bigger PC. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.